Hey everybody, this is the Sliders Review, and I'm here today to talk to you about Batwoman Season 3, Episode 12, We're All Mad Here. So, after two weeks, the show is finally back, and I gotta say, watching this episode did not feel like your traditional CW show. It felt more like that Gotham show. Like, I was getting some, sh like, really strong, like, Gotham vibes, and just like with the um gray skies during the day certain camera angles certain like weird wackiness stuff going on like the intense moment the like surreal drama and everything it's like it really felt like i was watching something from the gotham show now i stopped watching gotham after like somewhere in um in the second season I just finally had enough of it. mostly because they changed from the premise of what the show was supposed to be like from the first season um because they knew it's more fun to see like batman villains and i guess uh, a young bruce wayne training even though that wasn't supposed to be the premise of the show and so like i'm just all like you know continuity wise like batman knows all his, who his villains are and they kind of know who he is as bruce wayne so <laughs> that made no sense to me so i just stopped watching but anyways, yeah, I was getting some strong, like, Gotham vibes, especially when they brought up, like, Barbara Keene. I'm just like, hey, I know that name. And I'm like, oh, wait, it's what's her name? And the Barbara Keene, the only one that's really ever been famous is the one from the Gotham show, because for the most part, she's not a heavy hitter in the comics. Like, she's barely, like, there, because her and Gordon, like, broke up and stuff, but... Yeah, when they mention like, you know, um, James Gordon, like, Jr., and, like, you know, how he went nuts that actually happened in the comics and stuff, so that was a nice little reference. But all in all, like I said, this was a pretty good episode, and it's like, you know, see, the CW can make some good stuff as long as they deviate from what they normally do and stuff. Like, there was, like, no long-winded speeches. The speeches was kind of, like, short. They were more um, angrier and stuff. And so it wasn't the whole sappy, long-winded speeches type stuff. I will say the only real problem I had in this episode was Joker 2.0. I'm still not feeling the Marcus actor as, like, the Joker. It's just he's not doing it for me. I don't like the way he dresses. He's just not a good impersonator of, like, the Joker. Speaking of the Joker, we actually got to see him in this episode. It was brief and his face was covered, but you got to see the back of him. You got to see his like um his like front body, but like his hand like over his face and stuff. You get to hear him laugh and everything. I'm very shocked and surprised they did that. And you shot well, shocked. <laughs> you saw more of him than you did in Titans. Because in Titans when he was beating Jason Todd. You couldn't tell if he was wearing purple or a black suit. Speaking of beating Jason Todd, I am so sick and tired of this show pissing on like Batman and Joker. Like ever since Batwoman was created, they've done one thing and one thing only. Piss on the legacy of Batman. And then starting with season three, they've been pissing on the legacy of the Joker. Now, the most iconic thing that happened in comic book history, Joker beating Jason Todd. Oh no, he had somebody to help him do that. He had Kiki um, help him do that. Seriously, why are they making Kiki such a big thing and they went and got rid of her in this episode? Like, why? She created Joker's Joy Buster. She created most of his toys and weapons. And now she helped beat Jason Todd to death. Like, really? You had to take that away from him? Like, I, like seriously. Like, there's just some times when, like, they push certain agendas to make things seem more cool when they don't have to be. They could have had Kiki do something else. I actually like Kiki. I don't know why they kept dressing her up as the Joker, like the face and everything. Like they tried to give her like kind of like the, the Heath Ledger Joker look in her face. Why not give that to Marcus? Like why are they giving it to her and they literally got rid of her in this episode? That don't make absolutely no sense to me. If you want Marcus to be Joker 2.0, make him look like the Joker and everything. Like, get him some makeup. Um, do something with his lips. But no, they gave the whole lip thing to, like, Kiki and stuff. 
And so, okay, let's break down some things that happened in this episode. So, we see Alice. She's whooping on, like, Marcus people, and she's trying to look for the joy buzzer. She finds it. She zaps herself. She's back to normal and everything. And we see her at court. And then we see her with brown hair. That kind of oddened me out. I'm just kind of like, why does she have brown hair now? And then, so, like... The court system all like, oh, okay, well, you know, since you just went mad and you're not mad no more, we're going to drop all charges on you or something. Let you be a free woman. I thought that was kind of weird, but I'm like, hey, whatever. You know, other weird stuff happened in this show. Then we see Ryan, like, all pissed at her because she used a joy buzz on herself and not Marcus. And, I'm all, and so it seemed very realistic until it suddenly wasn't when she started to see Ocean. And I knew that was going to happen because... I follow some of the people on like Instagram and they showed a picture of Mouse and um, Ocean. And so like, you know, um, so okay, she's hallucinating there, I think, because she's still cuckoo in the head. What exactly is making her cuckoo in the head? I don't think they've explained that this entire season. And so like, she's with Mary and she's talking about how like, you know, um, she looked after her when she was like um, Mary Poison. That's a, that is a catchy name. And how, like, and all this other stuff. And Mary, ooh, Mary did some good acting in that part when she started crying and hollering, talking about, like, you just, like, strung me along. If you really cared about me as your sister, you would have stopped me instead of, like, making me do all this bad stuff. And I killed this man and blah, 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 and blah, blah, blah. So then Alice gets pissy at her and starts shoving her around and everything. And I gotta say, the, the, the dramatic part of that was really good. It was really strong. You could sink your teeth into it. Mary did an excellent job, thank God. <laughs> and of course, the actress who plays Rachel, um, well, Rachel who plays Alice, she has some good dramatic point um, parts in this. Her acting has always been the best out of everybody in this show. And it was so good. It was so dramatic. I remember when I saw her in Rain. I thought she was so good in that. Birds of Prey could have went either way. She didn't have much to do in that. So she was just kind of like the annoying young person. But in Rain, she was really good. And that's the only thing I... Like, those two shows, the only thing I saw in other than this. And she gave an amazing performance. That helped, like, save this, like, episode and stuff. And made it that more interesting. Um, you know, because she just basically was just a hollering and screaming when she found out how it wasn't real and, and how, like, Mary doesn't like it and all this stuff. And just other stuff in this episode that just, like, was really good. And so this whole episode, she's just basically looking for the joy buzz and stuff. So she goes to, like, Marcus' place and, like, uh, I forgot what happened. Something happens and then, like, he tells her, like, you know, um... Oh, jeez, I forgot. Something happened when she went to his place. And, um, oh, no, I remember she went to his hideout because she wanted Kiki to make her a new buzzer. And so Kiki's acting her goofy little self. And so then Marcus shoots and kills Kiki. So no more Kiki. So what exactly did he want her to build him? Because she was building something. I think I might know, but I won't find out till next episode. Um, so, you know, then he drugs her and she wakes up and when she wakes up, she sees him with the Black Glove Society. Now, the Black Glove Society, they were in the comics. They were known as the Black Glove, but their motive was different. Their motive in the comic was to kill Batman. Their motive in this show is when a wealthy person has like an out of control kid, they do something to stop it. So, Barbara King's there, and some other people from Batman's comics show up, like the dude, um, the Arkham dude, the, um, the professor dude, uh, one of the gangster guys, I forgot, uh, mob dudes, I forgot his name. Uh, so a lot of people that you, like, names you recognize show up, and he pretty much plays, like, um, that little spinning wheel thing, and it lands on a weapon, and that's how he's gonna kill him and stuff like that. So that was kind of cool, I like that. But, you know, it was interesting. When I said this thing had a Gotham vibe, it had, like, these weird camera angles. Like, when um, Alice was, like, running out somewhere, it had this weird camera angle on her face that's so Gotham and everything. So, let's get in a little bit about Ryan. By the way, Ryan is barely in this episode. Batwoman is barely in this episode. 
So they do this one cool thing that Batman always does. Takes the grappling gun, ties up somebody's leg, and pulls them up, hangs them upside down. She swoops in, and it's that weird cape thing that they did again with CGI. Like, it looks good coming down until it folds open a weird kind of way. And it's longer than what the cape normally is. And so, like... At one point, she's talking to her mom, and Sophie is there because her mom would to go visit Ryan. But Sophie's there in her underwear. And so it's an awkward, like, conversation. And so um, Sophie's just leaning into Jada and stuff. And then they mention how, like, um, what is it? Um, Barbara Keene, I think, been kidnapped. Or something like that. And then so that's how to do with the whole black glove thing. And so that makes Jada run out. But Ryan doesn't know why. And Sophie thinks she knows why. So then she does this really cool thing. She meets Jada outside. Talking about like. She's like how'd you get here so fast? She's like um, it's a lesbian bar. You find your exit. <laughs> so... <laughs> but then Jada gets kidnapped by Marcus. With a fake chauffeur and everything. And so, like, I'm surprised she didn't tell, like, Ryan, you know what I'm saying? But, um, so, like, yeah, so Sophie and Ryan, they kind of had this thing because Luke, he's all like, um, Sophie, you wore the same outfit yesterday. So, and then, so, Ryan lies and tells them why she did. They didn't say that they're together, so... This, of course, upsets Sophie. So now we get the whole CW stuff of them in the back car, um, Batmobile. I should call it the back car. It don't even look like the Batmobile. Them in the Batmobile. And so they're, they're having their long winded speeches about, oh, you know, um, and stuff about their relationship and how she's, she feels like, like, is she embarrassed by it? Why won't she tell people? Why is she hiding it? You know, I, like, she doesn't get it. You know what I'm saying? And so, like, um, so of course, like, let's get back to like Marcus because that's a little bit more interesting. And so, like, Jada, of course, she's kidnapping, so he's offing people one by one by one as Alice is hallucinating now about Mouse. The dude who plays Mouse, he should be Joker 2.0 or at least Scarecrow. He has that creepiness to him, he has that creepy voice thing to him. So she's hallucinating bad, and I mean bad. And so, like, it appears that he kills Barbara by giving her, like, you know, like this type of um, medicine that she gave her son. And it looks like she overdosed. But they let her survive at the end. And I don't understand why. Like, all that medicine should have killed her. And then, so... He's about to kill Jada, but then what's the name stops him? Because she wants that joy buzzer. And my God, he reveals something very interesting that I did not see coming. So he explains to her what happened that day the Joker tortured him. And he doesn't just explain, it's the flashbacks as he explained it. And that's when we get a glimpse of like the Joker. And so basically Joker came on the bus and um he stood up to the Joker, and then that's when Joker, Joker, see, Joker told him he plans on leaking um, the chemicals that made him all over Gotham and turning people to look like him with the white face and green hair and the red lipstick. And then he zaps Marcus, which causes him to go crazy. I think that's what Marcus wanted Kiki to build him some type of device that makes everybody like go mad or something like that. That's the only thing I can think of because there's nothing literally else. And so, like, then he explained Joker was driving the bus. And then, so, um, B Batman was in pursuit of the bus because Joker was driving it. And then he said there was a car of a woman driving very slowly. And next thing you know, Joker like runs into like the car with the bus. It goes over the bridge. That's Kate and um and like Alice uh, slash Beth like origin of how they got separated and stuff. Joker is the one that caused this. 
when Alice hears this, I thought for sure she was going to like kill that dude and stuff. Even though he had nothing to do with the bus, it was Joker driving. But then she tells Marcus, you know, I got something way better than the Joker could ever give you um, if you just give me that buzzer. And so, like, yeah, I did not see that coming. Like, they always explain how the bus went over the le um, the bridge, but they never say who was driving because they couldn't say the Joker at that time. And so that was kind of like a cool tie-in, you know what I'm saying? And he tells her, basically, you know, we were born at, like, the same time. So anyways, um, after getting, like, the buzzer and everything, because he lets Jada, like, go. And it was weird seeing Alice save, like, Jada, you know what I'm saying? And so, um, oh, let's get to Mary. So, Mary is feeling sad about killing that dude. So, she goes to, like, the widow's house in the sun. And she's about to explain, like, she knows who killed, like, your husband. And they're like, oh, we already know. Some woman with blonde hair called and said it was her. It was Alice and blah, blah, blah. Alice took the fall. Because she wanted to prove to Mary that she would do anything for her and all this other stuff. And what's jacked up is Mary let them believe that. Mary let her believe that she killed her husband and everything. That was pretty low down. And she was happy about that. Like, what kind of crap is that? She should have woman up. And admit, I know it was me and this is what happened and blah, blah. Take some responsibility for your actions. But she seems so cool about that. So it makes me wonder if this gets picked up. How is she going to be in season four? Not to mention, this puts another kill on Alice's um, resume and stuff. And on um, criminal record. So Alice is about to zap herself. And then in comes Sophie. Sophie's ready to shoot her and everything. Talking about, no, we need that for Marcus. And she's all like, no, I need it for me because I want to be normal. Because she just wants to be normal again. After all these years of being nuts and everything, she just wants to be normal. And none of the Bat family can see that. They, it's like... I don't know why they're, they're so concerned about Marcus. Yeah, Marcus was innocent, but now Marcus is doing bad stuff, which as, but well, he's doing bad stuff all because he's not brainwashed, but that whole Joy Buzzer thing is stupid. It shuts off the um, empathy in your head and makes you go crazy and stuff. That don't make no sense. But, and of course, Alice just went nutty nutty just to do it. So they're all like, you're worse, but you know, whatever. So they fight, they struggle, she gets the buzzer. She's about to zap herself and Luke throws a batarang and knocks it out her hand. And I'm just kind of like, you know, um, seriously, dude, like nobody wants to save Alice. And they know if she'd be normal, she'll stop being crazy in the head, stop trying to kill folks and stuff. And so she's on the ground, she's a hollering and everything. She's upset. And so like... Batwoman, she's in there talking to Marcus and everything, and she takes her mask off after she revives Barbara, but Barbara passes back out again. Now, what if somebody would have came in there and her mask is off? Like, you know what I'm saying? And so Jada, so they struggle, and Jada has to say Batwoman. Because that woman, that woman just lets Marcus just do all kinds of stuff to her. Like she, like she don't want to lift a finger to hurt his behind. And so then, like, um, he's about to like freeze her, but then um, Jada comes in and shoot the canister, and then he flees and everything. So then, um, they arrest Alice, like literally, and just throw her back in Arkham, and she's upset, talking about how she doesn't want to be in Arkham no more. Like, she literally tells Luke and Sophie, I don't want to go back to Arkham. I just want to be normal. And they still lock her behind up and put her there. So then, of course, Mary comes to visit, thanking her for taking the fall and everything. But Alice has to reveal what she gave Marcus. The entrance to the Batcave. Yeah. So then... Of course, the show wouldn't be complete unless Luke is a weenie. <laughs> so when Mary is like talking to Luke and um, Ryan and Sophie and everything, she's all like, Sophie, you're wearing the same outfit as you was yesterday. How come? And then they just, it's like a long pause. And Mary's like, Mary had a funny moment. She's like, oh, 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 
God. Like that was just funny and stuff. But then Mary is able to deduce that they did it and everything. But Luke couldn't. Luke was still kind of like, what, for real? Isn't he supposed to be a genius? How is he not able to figure that out? But Mary can. They always make him into a weenie. <laughs> And so, of course, next episode, Marcus wants to, like, turn people crazy, blah, 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 and Joker 2.0, and so boring, blah, blah, blah. Now, one thing I hate is when people spoil crap, and I'm about to spoil it right now because I got spoiled and I don't care. So, when I was on Instagram, I follow, like, Rachel, who plays Alice, and she posted the picture of her and Mouse and Ocean and stuff, right? But when I swapped... There is a photo of Marcus, uh, Marcus over the ledge and that woman saving him. So, yeah, something's going to happen. I, I bet he's going to turn nice again next week because they still got the joy buzzers. So, you know, they ain't going to keep him evil for long, especially how his Joker 2.0 ain't that good. But all in all, like I said, this was a good episode. I like the tension. I like the drama. Rachel did a good job acting. The Mary actress did a really good job acting. Luke is still a weenie. Um, they still forcing the whole Sophie and like Ryan thing, which makes no sense. And, you know, but all in all, this was a really good episode. I expect Jada might die next week and Marcus is going to be saved or something like that. I mean, what are they really going to do now? Because they, I mean, well, maybe Marcus might die. Because think about it. If he lives, he knows who Ryan is. He's going to be hanging around the Batcave now. And then at some point, he's going to be a hero. And, you know, I, just, I don't want to see that. The CW always does that. You know, it's, it's like the whole Joe's wife always in the, um, out in the field now, you know. And it's just like, why is she part of the team? You know what I'm saying? Now, one thing I don't understand about... Barbara Keene is, why is she so young in this? Like, she's not young, young, but she's at least about Jada's age, which makes no sense because she should have gray hair because around this time, Gordon should be, like, really old. You know what I'm saying? And Stephanie Brown is an adult in this, and Stephanie Brown is a teenager, so Barbara should be having some, like, gray hair. Like... Bruce looks like he's about five years younger than like Barbara Keen in this episode. So I don't understand that at all. And I mean at all. So it's just kind of weird how they do certain ages here because Batman, Joker, and Gordon, all them, they're all supposed to be older and stuff. We saw what Batman looks like, Bruce. And he looks like he's about like. 40 or something like that but barbara looks like she's about 45 or something like that but she should be rocking some gray hair you know so i don't understand because let I me mean, look at nora freeze nora freeze is like old you know what i'm saying but then again she aged faster once she got out of that thing but still it's like i don't understand why they got her so young in this Alrighty, well i'll talk to y'all later bye